Hey guys, how's it going? It's Travis Mortz with the Forest Hill Film Lab, and uh, today I decided to talk about my new Lomo Instant Wide. Um, before buying this camera, I looked online for videos just to see if I could gather some information about it that I was curious about, and uh, there's a lot of questions I had that I really couldn't find answers for, so that's what this video is going to be. Um, I'm basically going to be talking about the pros and cons of this camera, um, the things that I don't like about it, uh, primarily are what I'm going to be talking about mostly because all the videos I watched on this camera was just everybody super stoked about it and just kissing its ass but it's not perfect it's got a lot of flaws actually and I'm going to talk to you guys about some of those flaws and um, just uh, I'd like to get some of your guys' input on what you think about them because some of the things that I found when shooting this camera was um, troublesome so uh, we're going to get started I'm going to talk to you guys about the Lomo Instant Wide so here we have the Lomo Instant Wide. Um, for those of you guys who follow me on Instagram, you know that I've been doing a photo of the day for every day of the year, a Polaroid. And when I started this project at the beginning of the year, I was using primarily Fuji Pack Film, and that's the way I really wanted to keep it. But once Fuji Pack Film was discontinued, um, I began shooting a Instax Wide 210. And after a few months of shooting the Insects Wide 210, I really loved how consistent it was. I really loved the results from it, but the thing I didn't like was the fact that I wasn't really in control of anything. I had no choices to be made. There was really no error on my part to be made. It was basically just shoot and go. So because of that, I really wanted something to shoot that I still could take some responsibility for. I wanted something that I could be proud of. Um, rather than the camera just spitting out consistent images all of the time. Um, that's basically the reason why I quit shooting digital. Um, I, I, I need that challenge to keep me interested. If it's too easy, then I don't want to use the camera anymore. So I looked onward to find something that gave me more control. Um, and that's when I found the Lomo Instant Wide. And uh, for those of you guys who are watching this video, you guys probably all also follow Matt Day. And uh, so I watched Matt Day's Lomo Instant Wide video, and it really inspired me to want one. I really thought, man, this camera is so capable of, you know, all the things that I'm missing with this Instax camera. So um, some of the features that it has are excellent. It's got a ranging focus. So instead of um, the two different ranges that the Instax had, which was like one meter to three meters and then three meters to infinity, this actually has a ring, a dial, so that was really nice. I liked that. Um, I also liked the button on the front. Um, a, a question I was wondering but I never had answered was how quick the photo was actually taken after pressing the button. We're going to talk about that. Um, so I really liked the fact that the button was on the front. It seemed like it would be a little bit easier to use. The, the Instax 210 is a little funky. Um, and then when we go to the back here, this is what really drew me in. This whole control panel here with all these different options and things I could change. So, Lomo advertises manual mode or manual capability. And that's because they have a 1 30th of a second shutter speed down here. So they say that that's manual. But that's not manual because we have to be able to also choose the aperture if we're going to choose the shutter speed. And we don't have that choice, so it's still a crapshoot if we're shooting a 30th of a second who's to say that the aperture is going to be correct so um, that was a little funky for me um, we have bulb mode this was a huge huge perk that the uh, the Instax doesn't have it doesn't have any way of shooting longer exposures so I really like that about the Lomo um, and then here we had auto mode of course and the multiple exposure mode these are all great things that add artistic um, abilities and you can now get more creative with this camera and I liked that I really liked the ability to be more creative um, so oh and then lastly the flash button you could choose to have the flash on or off and it would actually stay off with the Instax wide this was an option but it would not stay off if the light got too low it would still fire flash and that was a huge problem for me. Um, but because of that, I basically only shot the Lomo or the, the Instax wide in broad daylight. I tried to keep my exposures relatively sunny to get great results. And that I did. The, the Instax 210 was an excellent camera for perfect results every time. Now, here's some of the problems I have with the Lomo. 
Now we're going to talk about, I, I told you about some of the features. Here are some of the problems I have with it. Um, we're going to start out with the focusing ring because I told you guys I really do like the fact that there's a focusing ring on here. I really do like the fact that I can focus in between spaces. But you'll notice if, I'll read it to you, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but it says 0.6 meters, so it's about a foot and a half. And then this next stop is 1 to 2 meters. Now, that's either what's either one meter or two meters. It's not both. It's not either three feet or six feet. And that, that's a huge problem for me because now when I'm shooting a subject, what the hell am I supposed to set it at? Am I, what if they're one meter away? How, how I, I can't feel comfortable setting it on the one to two meter range because I know that if this is one to two, then one really should be a little bit before it. Um, and I'm wondering why Lomo, if they, if they made a, a lens that can give in between spaces, if they made a lens that's a dial like this, why they couldn't put real distances here, I don't, I don't quite understand. It, it's really frustrating for me. Um, now I'm going to have to put a piece of ground glass in this camera, open up the lens, and I would like to figure out what these distances really are, because now it says infinity. Well, what's the last step before infinity? Is it like 10 feet to infinity? Is it 8 feet to infinity? When do I put it on infinity? Because my last choice is 3 to 6 feet, infinity. So uh, I really wish I knew what the balance was because this is a camera that you can get out of focus. Um, and I'll explain why. So we'll move on. So that's one thing that kind of irritated me. I wish that if we have this wonderful focusing ring that has in between steps um, between the you know decided distances why isn't there a more extensive scale we're all human beings we understand what distance is why couldn't we have had a one foot to ten foot scale or whatnot so that's a little troublesome with me and then um, so here's the other thing that bothers me um, let me get a piece of paper so here I've got all these shutter speeds and stuff. I'll have to add one or two. But this camera has two different apertures. The two different apertures are f8 and f22. Excellent. So we've got two different apertures of f8 and f22 and the camera decides that. And then we also have a, a shutter speed range up to 250th of a second. So that's a little troublesome for me as a photographer because I know my rate, I, I know my exposures, and 1,000 at f16 at 800 ISO. That's sunny 16, right? If it's broad daylight outside, this is what our exposure should be. If we're shooting with 800 ISO film, right? So if this camera only does a maximum of 250th of a second, that's one stop, two stops. And it only goes one stop aperture wise, what does that tell us? That tells us that if it's sunny outside, this camera cannot take a good exposure. And that pisses me off. Um, I don't understand why Lomo didn't do this sort of math that I did, but because of this, every time I'm shooting in broad daylight, like sunny, sunny daylight, these pictures are not dark enough. They could be darker because we're not really shooting a sunny 16 exposure. We're always shooting plus one stop. Um, so that's something a little troubling with me because I always put it at the minus one setting when I'm shooting in daylight because I know this. So if I was shooting at the zero setting, would this camera be overexposing two stops? Uh, I don't know and that's troubling for me. I don't understand why um, this camera doesn't have maybe a smaller aperture or a faster shutter speed to compensate for broad daylight shooting. I mean, come on, that's when we want to take the best pictures, broad daylight. So, um, that's another thing that's a little bother, uh, bothersome for me is like, can we really get a sunny 16 exposure out of this camera or should we always be shooting in cloudy situations, which, um, I'll touch base on next. So, that's another issue, um... Like I said, everybody who posts a video about this camera talks about how great it is because it's groundbreaking as far as Instax wide film goes, but as far as the camera goes, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's a disappointment, but there's definitely some things that need changing. So um, let's move on to the next thing, and we'll talk about the bulb and 1 30th of a second mode.
Okay, so I told you guys that the this camera has two different apertures. Now, the problem with it having two different apertures is that now there's two different variables happening within the camera to make a correct exposure. So you have the camera's meter, which is right here. So you have the camera's meter determining, should I shoot this at f8 or should I shoot this at f22? And then once it determines that setting, it's also going to assign our shutter speed accordingly. So this seems like it's pretty pretty foolproof, like, you know, this is a pretty good system for exposure, right? Um, but no, it's not, because what I found is, when I'm shooting in shade, into sunlight, which sometimes happens, the light that's hitting my exposure meter is not enough light for the camera to stop down to 22. So now it's shooting at f8 primarily, because it doesn't have direct light on it, and as I mentioned earlier, my max maximum shutter speed is 250th of a second. So now, if I am shooting any sort of subject with sunlight on it, and there's not sunlight on my camera, this camera's overexposing every single time. Every single time. So now, if I'm outside shooting in shade, almost every time, this camera's shooting at f8, when it needs to be shooting at f22 and maybe a different shutter speed. So here, I'm going to demonstrate to you guys exactly what the hell I'm talking about with bulb mode. So here I have my light. This is the light I used to film with, you know, you guys, pretty bright. And I have it on bulb mode, and here's another problem. When this camera's on bulb mode, and when this camera's on 1 30th of a second mode, it still determines the aperture based on the amount of light hitting the camera. So even if you have it on bulb or 1 30th of a second, you still don't know what the hell your aperture is going to be because it's based on what the camera wants it to be, and you cannot change it. So, here we go on bulb mode. I don't know what what aperture it's gonna go at, go at, but I'm gonna tell you. So, this is f8, and if I turn the camera a little bit up to the to the light, just a little bit, f8. And let's see, f22. Why? I've been pointing this camera at the light the whole time. The same amount of light's been hitting this camera. F22 again, and watch, f8. That's a two-stop difference, and I don't know when it's going to make the difference. So now, F8, if I'm shooting in any sort of light scenario, I have to make sure... Here's F22 again. I have to make sure that the light source that's hitting my subject is the same light source that's hitting my camera. Otherwise, I can't really ensure on a good exposure because I don't know what the fuck aperture this thing's going to shoot at. Um, that's frustrating. It's really frustrating. So when I'm shooting outside with flash, which... To shoot flash with this camera, it's excellent. It has a PC port on the side. You can sync your flashes, but it's really difficult to figure out what my flash exposure is going to be when you control your flash exposure with aperture and your aperture can be changed based on ambient light. So if I'm shooting at dawn or dusk and I'm using flash as a fill, how can I ensure that my camera is going to be shooting at f22 when I want it to be if I can't, can't give more ambient light, basically? Um, I know it sounds a little bit confusing, but for those of us who are understanding what the hell I'm talking about, you should be outraged because that's frustrating. So even at 30th of a second, F8, 30th of a second, F22, 30th of a second. Now I have a two-stop difference that I am not in control of, and that's frustrating. So F8 again, and I mean, this camera is getting hit with the same amount of light, F22. So... I, now I'm, every single photo I take, I'm fighting with myself. I, I'm trying to make sure that the camera is going to get the right amount of light hitting this piece of shit sensor here. Otherwise, if I get a bright photo like I did earlier, let me see if I can find it. If I get a bright photo, it's like I know why because look at this. This is in daylight. I just took it. I just put it in auto mode and I took it. What the hell happened? I must have been standing under a shade tree and it must have shot at f8 even though my subject was in broad daylight. This is, this is fucked up. So I don't like that. Because of that, I've got all these photos here that are throwaways. I mean, a lot of these are photos that I don't want anymore because they aren't right. And so because of that, this camera is really great for the artistic person out there who wants the challenge, I am accepting the challenge, but it's frustrating for the person out there who wants perfect results just so they can have the photo. Um, so, 
Yeah, the, the biggest problem I've had with this camera is exposure because now that I know all of these things, I'm fighting with myself the whole way through and don't even get me started on the multiple exposure mode. How the hell can you make multiple exposures when you can't actually control your exposure? So when I turn it on the minus one like you should do for multiple exposures, it should work out that I'm underexposing both frames and they come out right. But more often than not, this thing ends up shooting it at f8 for both frames and overexposing the hell out of every double exposure. Um, here's a double exposure overexposed. Here's a double exposure overexposed. Um, you know, these are the things that are frustrating. Um, so I'm now I've started to put a polarizing lens on here if I'm shooting in the shade. How weird is that? The only reason I'm doing that is because it overexposes in the shade because it shoots at f8 when it should be at f22 because this is 800 ISO film. Um, so yeah, that's the that's kind of my take on the Lomo Instant Wide. There's there are a lot of great things about it, but the few things that are bad about it are really bad. I feel like I you know the kinds of results I'm getting are they're fine, but they're not what I want. Um, here's a great example. You know this is. This is shot, this was the first photo I took with it, and I liked it, but I was just like, it's too bright. I mean, why is it so bright? It could have more contrast. It could be a little bit darker, and that's kind of been the general consensus with all these photos is that they end up being too bright. You know, here's one shot in shade. Here's a, this is a double exposure. That's not so bad, but, you know, that's um, the difficulty I'm having, and then not to mention um, the Instax 210 that I usually shoot. It shoots at a native f14, so more often than not, the photos from that have been sharper than this camera. So if this camera is not going to be the sharpest camera on the market, I at least want it to be more consistent than the sharpest camera on the market, and it's also not. Um, the automatic mode is dog shit as far as I'm concerned, um, and that's kind of what I wanted to tell you guys. I, uh, I didn't really want to make a opening the box video or any of that stuff. I wanted to shoot the camera and kind of find out the things I didn't like. Um, let's see, okay, a couple more things I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, the shutter. So I was wondering when I was going to buy this camera, is the shutter button instantaneous? Um, I, I have a couple things, a couple pieces of criteria that I like when I'm buying a camera and it needs to be able to stop action and it needs to be able to stop action when I press the button. Um, the Fuji Instax was terrible at this. It had such a delay time that shooting VMX was near impossible and additionally the shutter speeds would always be too slow. So I like that about this camera that it shoots up to 250th in daylight despite the fact that if it's in broad daylight it will be a bright photo. Um, and then the other thing about this camera that I like is although the shutter button I wouldn't say is instantaneous, it's pretty damn close. So I'm going to show you guys a couple different times for the guys out there who are also wondering this, so you could get a good idea because I didn't get to see this. So um, we'll go like this and I'm gonna press the button a few times very obviously so you guys can see how quick exactly uh, the, the shutter fires when you press the button. So here we go. See, it's just got a slight delay on it, just a teeny one. So as you see, the, the shutter speeds are changing with the exposures. That's kind of how this camera works. It, it determines its aperture and then it sets the shutter speed accordingly. That is why the biggest problem with this camera is it doing a bad job of choosing its aperture. Um, basically choosing f8 when it's supposed to be 22 is the biggest issue that I've been having. Um, and it's almost impossible to find out what the camera is going to decide because it's it's the camera and it, it's in control. So um, that's kind of how instantaneous the button is. I just want to show you guys that because that was a question that I had when I was shooting it. Um, but as far as the PC sync goes, this was one of the biggest reasons why I bought this camera and it works excellent. Um, and when you're shooting with flash at nighttime, the 30th of a second sync speed doesn't ever seem to um, affect quality of the photo. I was stopping action no problem using the flash power rather than the camera's shutter speed. Um, so that was really neat uh, just being able to shoot flash at nighttime. but like I said I haven't really tried shooting it at dusk yet because I don't know how frustrated I'm gonna get if this thing keeps shooting at f8 all the time and I need it to be at f22. 
Um, it's like you could cover this thing up to choose F8, but you can't add light to the camera to choose 22. So uh, I wish there was like one more extra toggle switch like F8 or F22 because then I could be more in control of my exposure. I don't want this thing changing one variable when I've decided that I want my shutter speed to be 1 30th. It does me no good if this thing's going to choose whatever the hell aperture it wants. Um, let's see, I'm not really sure if there's anything else I really need to talk about with this camera. The results from it have been pretty good. Um, it's like golden hour, the best time to shoot is the fucking hardest because I can't put my back to the sun because if I put my back to the sun and the sun on my subject, my camera doesn't get the light that it needs to expose the photo right and they either end up washed out or a silhouette or some shit. So that has been like the biggest issue is like I can only shoot when the sun's high in the sky and hitting my camera because once the sun gets low in the sky, I can't shoot into the sun, silhouette. I can't shoot away from the sun, overexposed. And it makes me want to throw this camera into the ground. So, um, anyways, I'm going to keep shooting with it. I'm still doing my 366 project uh, photo of the day. This camera has made it a lot easier. I'm, however, blowing through film like a madman because of my results not being so consistent. That's a bit frustrating. But um, aside from that, I am having a good time with the challenge. And I do feel a little bit more accomplished when the photographs come out good because it's such a pain in the ass for that to happen. Um... And yeah, I would recommend this camera to anybody who wants to be more in control of your photos, but also somebody who's patient and doesn't mind wasting film because, you know, a lot of these exposures, I didn't choose these exposures. There was enough light out here to expose these photos and they weren't being exposed. And here, this is like, I put a polarizer on to try to make the exposure come down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's some perks. I mean, look at, this was... Um, somewhat of a long exposure obviously it shows f8 instead of f22 when i need it to um so you know there's there's definitely perks to this camera it is a great camera for the artist out there it's not however a great camera for someone who wants good results every single time i would recommend buying a cheaper fuji camera it's going to save you more money in the long run on two different platforms um but anyways i've got some film to develop i just really wanted to make this video for you guys and uh try to make it short and sweet or maybe long-winded um, but anyways, that's the Lomo Instant Wide. That's kind of my take on it. Tell me, guys, tell me what you guys think about some of the stuff I mentioned here. Tell me if you're as outraged as I am. Um, but either way, until next time, thank you guys for watching and keep on shooting.